This is the second MyFord Super 7 that I modernize with the, the electronic lead screw, the ELS, from the company Rocketronics. I think this turned out well, so I will go through this in detail for you. One of the things that I appreciate is that this uh, comes in a kit form, so uh, it is just a matter of assembly and uh, following detailed instructions that uh, comes with it. In its simplest form, an ELS conversion is just a means of replacing the uh, longitudinal feed uh, with a motor drive that is uh, driven in sync with the spindle and, and then controlled from this ELS box. So this is the simplest way. That means that you do away with the hassle of setting up the change gears and switching from cutting threads to, to the longitudinal feed. And you can cut any combination uh, of feed rate and um, pitches you want. Of course, being restricted to only having the set axis uh, controlled, you must do a semi-automatic thread cutting operation. Therefore, I recommend, of course, to also then adopt the x-axis drive and control, thereby allowing you to do a fully automatic threading operation just uh, run from the control box. The Super 7 is, of course, a very nice lathe, and you can run this uh, through a one-phase or a three-phase motor, and I personally run it uh, through a three-phase and a VFD. Uh, that means that I don't necessarily have to switch uh, between the pulleys to switch uh, speeds as often as I uh, needed to without the VFD. And my first Super 7 is also then equipped with a clutch, which is nice. Although with the VFT you don't necessarily have to use that because you can start and stop the motor anytime you want to. Um, the setup is uh, pretty simple when you have it like this and I consider this a very useful modernization of a Super 7 or any small lathe really. Here I am turning a piece, just a test cut. I'm using a block instead of the um, uh, top slide there, so I mount uh, the two loaders directly onto this block. I think this is a rigid and very nice use, uh, useful setup. You get the point? So that's, uh, the, the top slide is no longer needed anyway, so that's just dispatched off. Set aside. In favor of this block. And on this machine, together with the encoder inside here, I have the hybrid stepper so not to lose the steps on an angle drive and neatly inside the gear cover there. And on the x-axis we don't need that power so we have just a normal stepper but also on the angle drive here. Uh, I can also then to obtain this normal silky smooth here operation, detach it all together. And just a couple of set screws. And then of course I have a, a rigid mount as I said and this being freshly scraped and aligned, it goes totally chatter-free and is very nice, I think. And um, as I said, uh, to the rear of this, I have a possibility to undo the stepper motor here all together so that I can retain the silky and smooth operation and then when I want to switch in again I just tighten the set screws and block this again and the way that I normally then just switch on and off is by this X off and X on and to show you a little bit of uh, operation, I will try to cut an external radius, which is uh, half of a circle, if you want to make a ball. So this is uh, really made normally with a rounded tool. I just use the same tool as I have tried to make my test cuts with. And then uh, using the menu for the external radius, I set uh, in feed and um, Longitudinal, the same, just as an example. Uh, four or five uh, millimeters. 
and then of course I need a feed rate and then I can start the operation by starting the spindle then I access and then hitting start I see the feed rate at uh, 0.1 millimeter per revolution and then the suggested um, operation with 12 uh, cycles 11 then roughing cycles plus one plus one finishing cycle then I just start and then proceed <laughs> you get the point I guess uh, should we really have started with uh, an undercut so and then precise dimensions so that to get a, a round ball or if I wanted to get a round ball this was just a, a trial cut to show radius turning really <laughs> 